One fine day, Arnalda, a young minstrel, announced that she would set out on a journey with the intent to compose the most beautiful love song ever created. She wanted to reflect through her words, accompanied by the subtlest of melodies, the true essence of love, so that it and its mysteries became accessible to all human beings. Such was her enterprise. Therefore, following her instinct, one fine day she departed on solitary pilgrimage in search of the creatures of nature. She believed that, if she could pay heed to them with the due reverence and attention, they would reveal to her the secret to the ethereal melody of love. Without further ado, one footstep at a time, her lyre dangling on her back, she arrived at a beautiful garden abandoned by the hand of man. Time was in charge now of sculpting the outline of the hedges with the generous and lush abundance of nature, and of ornamenting the crevices between the rocks and pebbles on the floor with youthful shoots. Here I shall find someone that might aid me, said Arnalda to herself. And she started chanting for the wind that danced amongst the boughs and branches the sun rays pursuing each other amidst the infinity of flowers, and the scents of the herbs and weeds that intermingled in the mid-air like an embrace of different symphonies of light, smoothness, and shimmering, subtle colors. A beautiful crimson rose awoke from her slumber on hearing her, and Arnalda, greeting it with the proper majesty that is obliged when addressing flowers, asked. Gorgeous crimson rose, queen of all flowers for your beauty, delicacy, exuberance and perfume, favored by the lovers. Would you agree to help me in my quest? I am seeking the answer to the mystery that will allow me to compose the most beautiful love song ever created. And the green sun rose answered. Love is the natural state of all living beings. When you have robust roots firmly fixed in the ground, and strong and healthy leaves that delight in breathing the sunlight, beauty finds the space to develop in the depths of your body. Love is what makes the first root stemming from the seed seek the moist and shadowy embrace of the earth, and the first leaves wish to mingle with the growing warmth of the sun. It is the force that allows that the darkest and the brightest in human nature meet and reconcile, transforming and nourishing your inner core with balance and harmony. Whoever allows this fusion of heaven and earth, of the most elevated and the most profound, throughout the circuits of their body, 
Whoever permits to be pierced and sustained by these antagonic yet loving forces creates inside their very soul the nest for the maturity of beauty. It is the seed inside the seed, the place where flesh and soul finally encounter. Thus, whoever abandons themselves to the nourishing and firm embrace of the earth and allows the wind to clean and shake their thoughts, has the love inside of them. Unlike my beauty and perfume attract for being exactly what they are, those who possess the love inside do not need to beguile, for they are complete in themselves. However they might be, they will find who enjoys their perfume out of their freedom of choice. Although the words of the crimson rose moved Arnalda's emotions very deeply, she realized that she did not possess the key to compose the most beautiful love song ever created yet. Hence, saying farewell to the flower and the garden with great reverence, with nimble feet and a happy heart she continued her journey. Without further ado, one footstep at a time, her lyre dangling on her back, she arrived at an ample field of ripe wheat. Cicadas screamed insanely in the torrid midday sun, and the golden spice curled graciously under the summer breeze like a sea set aflame, thirsty for even more blaze. Poppies peeped out shyly like red smiles flashing amidst the agitated monotony of that glistening ocean of gold. Most assuredly, I shall find someone that might aid me here too, said Arnalda to herself. And like she had done in the garden, she took her lyre and offered a bright chant of rain and sunlight to the vast extension of ripe wheat, which shone along with her rhythm and with the wind that wanted to steal the hands of her skirt and played with her hair, daringly. A thick-eared spike started humming the song along with her, dancing to her cadence, and Arnalda, dropping a curtsy full of due homage in front of one of the most important stale crops, said, Radiant wheat spike, you that turn the sunlight into food for animals and humans alike, and nourish them with its warmth and strength, would you agree to help me in my quest? I am seeking the answer to the mystery that will allow me to compose the most beautiful love song ever created. And the golden spike answered. Love is the force that moves to gestation and transformation. It is what makes possible that all the work we do during our existence, all the things we live, all that we feel, can serve as raw material for the creation of more life. Thus, in the same way that I have grown from a seed until becoming a spike and my work will serve when I'm not here anymore, for the creation of new food, 
The lives of parents, teachers and doctors are the sustenance of those who are learning and growing. That said, in the case of the human being it is written that the son may also be a father for the father, the pupil a master for the master, and the patient a doctor for the doctor, because any contact that is established with another living creature is revelatory, for the way we react to them is what we truly are. Because of that, whoever loves has to be brave and must be willing to be crowned, kneaded and baked by the sentiment, for giving in to love is penetrating in the greatest source of change, adventure and knowledge that exists. Thus, Whoever shows themselves exactly as they are and allows that the others take from them all their good and all their bad, without hindrance or fear of rejection, judgment or conflict, whoever trusts and is transformed into new matter by their feelings, whoever dedicates themselves completely in body and mind, blood and soul, to the well-being of those whom with their life experience, sustains, that person is a master of love and with their very being nourishes and feeds the core of those who surround them. Despite the fact that the words of the Golden Spike made a very pleasant impression on Arnalda, she felt that she still needed to search more to find the key to compose the most beautiful love song ever created. Thus, she said farewell with great respect and gratefulness to the Spike and the wheat field, and after that, more serenely but yet enlivened, continued her journey. Without further ado, one footstep at a time, her lyre dangling on her back, she entered the thick and shadowy autumnal forest in which the trees gifted their dry leaves to the cold wind shaking them. In the refreshing moisture of the wood, the scent of the decomposing front, of beautiful ochardines, and of the occasional wild fungi sprouting amidst the tall trunks vivified Arnalda's lungs. And when she arrived at the mossy shore of a crystalline stream she stopped and exclaimed herself. Most assuredly, I shall find here some other being of nature that might aid me in my task. And, sitting on a smooth grey rock, she took her lyre once again and chanted a song full of melancholy, in a very low voice, dedicated to the ochre leaves that fell on the surface of the water and let themselves be driven by the soft and very clear current, to the bare boards that curved and entwined over her head 
and to the slumberous whisper of the stream, which invited her to indulge in daydreams and fantasies. The stone of rounded and smooth forms that raised solemnly from the center of the stream bed woke up and listened to her song, and Arnalda, dropping a respectful curtsy in front of it, said, Soft and gentle stream rock, whose shape and nature remind of a sitting man in meditation amidst the currents of time, would you agree to help me in my quest? I am seeking the answer to the mystery that would allow me to compose the most beautiful love song ever created. And the polished stream rock answered her. Love is the inner force that purifies us. This stream's water has been gliding softly over my surface for many years, and now it is smooth and soft and barely offers any resistance to the currents. In the same way, the turbulence of life, with its joys and its troubles, pierces through the soul and crashes against any edges and rugosities that are determined not to let it pass. And this generates pain and a feeling of helplessness, because we fear suffering. Yet the current of life cannot be stopped and always finds its way, despite we might not like it and try to prevent this from happening. Thus. Whoever rebels against what life has assigned to them lives a life of hurt, trying hopelessly to hide at all times from their own untrue self, and fighting against themselves to constrain the flow of their emotions. And then comes the day when the dam they have erected cracks and bursts under the insufferable pressure. Love is what makes us confide in life's wisdom, and, instead of fighting, let it polish, little by little, our asperities. It is the humility of whoever recognizes their own mistakes and joins their own effort to the work of the subtle and constant stroke of time, thus illustrating their spirit. In this manner, Whoever allows the soft and continual hand of life cleanse them gets purified and harmonized with it and its caresses, the same way that the currents of the stream acknowledge the soft pebbles of the riverbed as old friends instead of as annoying obstacles. And in the same way that the current of water and the cobbles of the riverbed know well each other and need one another to form the completeness of the stream flow, whoever loves is nearer to comprehending the true nature of life, because they feel its stroke directly on their naked soul, and understands that love grows and spreads from this contact, until its flood embraces all the universe. The words of the rock in the stream bed had directly reached the very soul of Arnalda, and had moved her profoundly. But in spite of that, she kept on oblivious of the key to compose the most beautiful love song ever created. So, albeit very reluctantly, she bid the polished rock, the stream and the autumnal woods farewell with a very respectful and grateful curtsy, and, exhausted already after such a long journey, decided to head back home and admit her defeat. But this time Arnalda got lost in her way back, 
and she got really frightened to see that she had entered a region completely covered in snow, where extreme cold and quietude were the only presence. As she could not turn back, she followed what seemed to be a path flanked by old tree stumps covered in ice and upon finding a white yard surrounded by tall and dark stone walls, she scurried inside, seeking refuge to spend the night. And then she did get really scared. She had entered an ancient abandoned cemetery, and right before the sunset, The old tombstones gleamed opaquely under the somber lights of the setting sun. How could she not have noticed them before? Arnalda ran back to the entry gates, but they were not there anymore. Had she got disoriented in the cemetery? Arnalda felt how the blood in her veins was freezing more and more, and she started at once, surrounded by the growing darkness, to grope along the walls with trembling hands, looking for an exit or a hole that would let her out of that horrible place and leave it behind. But all around was getting darker and darker, and soon the poor minstrel faltered and let herself fall down, surrendering over the moldy corner of the enclosure, amidst the shadows trying to keep as far as she could from the tombstones, all of them covered in moss and lichen, while she held tight her lyre against her chest. What a terrible experience! Arnalda could not see anything at all, so near as she was from the company of the dead, and she searched in her soul for her instinct to point her to some possible exit, and it answered her at once, telling her to calm down, play her lyre, and start singing. No way! Arnalda rebelled against that idea, finding it absurd. Disturbing insolently the peace of the dead that way, calling even more for their attention, and she kept on thinking of better options. But the same idea returned again and again to her mind. Play for the dead. Sing for the dead. In the end, mesmerized by the situation, she started to reckon that perhaps it was not such a crazy idea after all. If any spirit was unquiet due to her intrusion, a song of sincere respect for the dead might perchance calm it down. Thus, drawing strength from weakness, she timidly started to chant a piteous and moving elegy dedicated to all those who lay under the earth turned to bones and dust, to those who mourn the loss of a loved one, and to those who render their lives to what they believe in in the depths of their heart. and her fingers suddenly froze on the lyre strings, for a phantasmagorical voice rose abruptly from among the tombs and said, Welcome to the realm of the dead, minstrel. Fear not. Your stay here is just transitory. All nature knows that you are seeking the key to the mystery of love to compose the most beautiful love song ever created. Therefore, you cannot accomplish your journey without paying a visit to this place. Poor Arnalda! So frightened was she that she became as rigid as another one of those cold, hard stones from that graveyard. But if she could have moved, she would have cried for forgiveness for having dared to guess the mysteries of love, 
and would have promised to be just another minstrel, not venturing ever again to ask silly questions to nature, repented from her enthusiasm and naivety. Yet the voice that came from the tomb was not macabre or menacing, but wise, serene and reassuring, similar in its own way to the whispers of the rose, the stone and the spike. It was simply the voice of another important, sacred facet of life, and upon seeing that the young minstrel kept on covering her eyes with her hands, aghast, it said softly, You have to want to see me so that I can talk to you. Fear not. Open your eyes and listen. And Arnalda, making a great effort, opened her eyes and fixed them on the darkness she had in front of her. And then she heard the dead who said, Love is the force that defeats our deepest fears. Humans fear looking at death face to face, unless it is from very afar, from a place where they feel it cannot reach them. But the real dread does not come from the death that ensues at the end of this life, about which, after all, we know nothing until our moment arrives, but from the death we experience every day. Abandonment, aggression, manipulation, coercion, Deceit, that people defame us, use us, hate us, subject us, ignore us, envy us or crush our dreams and needs, everything that becomes an impediment to be free and complete, everything that prevents us from being, existing, that is the real death that the humans fear, the one they really know about. But this death is so near by us, so quotidian and familiar, so powerful and provokes so much pain in our lives that man, driven by panic, will rather close their eyes to it and take shelter in the solace of the fear of the unknown. Yet this death only has the power we want to give it. For whoever is brave and looks at it in the eye sheds light on its darkness, the light of acknowledgement, of self-awareness, and of inner intelligence. And then they are ready to fight against the challenges of life standing on their own ground, instead of taking blind steps against the invisible enemies that steal away in the dark surroundings amongst the mist of impotence and confusion. Love is what gives us the strength to listen to our own body when death is near, stalking us. It is what makes us see the most frightened part of us and fight to protect it. Love grants us the courage of the warrior, the wisdom of the elder, the protection of the mother, the innocence of the child, the serenity of the sage, the sure instinct of the animal. Love makes available to us all the existing forces in the universe to help us protect the most vulnerable parts of ourselves in front of death. So whoever opens their eyes to the truth of the danger of their own death and renders themselves to the quest for their own path of freedom and completeness, Whoever trusts in the insights of this life and passes all the tests that it presents to them, 
Whoever dares to see and accept their own fears, hates, weaknesses and devotes themselves to take care and educate them with loving patience, that person is truly alive and possesses in their being a force able to redeem the darkest of darkness. And where there was nothing but shadows before, now gestate new worlds of love in their inner core. And even after this person has departed from this world, this love will keep on resonating in the hearts of those who will have shared with them an instant of their existence. And in the same way that flowers wilt to release the seed of a new life, their memory will germinate with the message of love in the souls of those who come to live after them. Arnalda felt how the tears ran down her cheeks on hearing this, and at the same time that she realized how far she had been from true love, the darkness of the cemetery, which she now acknowledged as a reflection of her own fears, started clearing slowly, like a magical sunrise, while the coldness and vacuousness of the sky melted and tempered. Finally, she found herself amongst the not sinister anymore but serene tombstones, covered in ivy and moss and, in fact, feeding with the hushed peace of their silence the secretive birth of new life amidst the cracks in the stone, still embraced to her lyre, as if she had just come out of a nightmare and the sunlight had awoken her in the morning. And, standing on her feet, with the dreamy gaze of those who have seen great marvels and have consented to be seduced by them, dedicate an ample and joyous courtesy to the perfect universe of harmony and existence that from there was contemplating her. Back home, Arnalda presented to her people the most beautiful love song ever created. And it went like this. Listen, listen boys and girls, my friends. This is the most beautiful love song ever created. Listen to my voice. Listen to my lyre. Listen to the silence. Listen to the silence, the wind in the trees, the whisper of the stream, the rumor of men. Listen to the silence, your tenacious heartbeat, the restless spring of your emotions, the passage of time tempering your spirit. This is the most beautiful love song ever created. Sing, and it will come out of your lips. Cry, and it will come out of your eyes. Laugh, and it will come out of your laughter. Dance, dance with life. Dance to the sound of the most beautiful love song ever created. She has already started to play and sing since the beginning of time. She is only waiting for you to join her and sing along with her. She is only waiting for you to join her and sing along with her. <laughs> 